dollars if one is not one is not careful. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, uh, it's probably time to start. Peter, could you share? Could you share your screen again? No, not all. Mm -hmm. How's that? Okay, yeah, uh, looks perfect. Okay. Uh, so, uh, welcome everybody. Today, it's a great pleasure to have uh, Peter Crook speaking, and uh, the title is Symplectic Reduction Along a Submanifold. Uh, Peter, I give you the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Anton, and, uh, and uh, to the organizers for, uh, for inviting me. It's always, a, uh, it's always a great pleasure to speak before um, this audience and in a seminar that um, uh, has worked out so nicely for, for the last year and a half. So today I'd like to talk to you um, about a, a symplectic quotient construction that um, on the one hand aims to um, kind of unify um, a number of uh, quotient constructions in symplectic geometry that have emerged over the last number of years. Um, and on the other hand, seeks to give context for uh, some recent work by uh, Ginsburg and, and Kajdan uh, on what are known as uh, more Tachikawa varieties um, in TQFT. Um, so the talk will proceed along the following line. So I am, um, and I should have said it is, everything here is uh, joint with uh, Maxence Mayerant, who is uh, here in the audience. Uh, everything, um, everything will be based fundamentally on um, a particular type of symplectic reduction um, in which one is actually reducing along a fairly arbitrary submanifold instead of the more conventional things along which one reduces. So I'll <laughs> begin by giving you the details and, and main result pertaining to that construction. Um, Second, I will go to uh, discuss some examples um, where this construction is actually implemented. Um, and some of those examples will be to witness um, existing symplectic quotient constructions as uh, special cases of the uh, procedure I will have outlined by that point. Um, and uh, other examples will be um, largely Lee theoretic and, um, and uh, as far as uh, Max Ons and I can tell, sort of new um, uh, Lee theoretic uh, Hamiltonian varieties. Um, this will lead to uh, a broader discussion of, of reduced spaces in a Lee theory, or universal reduced spaces in a Lee theoretic context. Um, and then that will lead to how our work connects with the recent Ginsburg uh, Kajdan project uh, on constructing more Tachikawa varieties in TQFT, okay? So throughout, please feel free to, uh, to interrupt and, uh, and ask questions. I, I welcome the discussion. All right, so let me uh, begin on a sort of purely motivational level with some informal context for the construction um, that I'm going to describe. So let's start with the basics of Marston-Weinstein reduction, the ingredients for which include a Lie group, say with a Lie algebra denoted by the corresponding German letter. And it will act on a, on a symplectic manifold in a Hamiltonian fashion. So I will have some kind of Hamiltonian G space denoted like that. And what I will do in addition, or what one does, is fix a, a point in the dual of the Lie algebra like that. And this point will have a stabilizer under the co-adjoint action. I'll denote it just like that. And then now, as we know, the stabilizer is going to act on the level set of XC under the moment map. I can take the resulting quotient topological space. And under reasonable hypotheses, um, this will not just be a topological space, but it will be a symplectic manifold. So the statement uh, of Marsden-Weinstein reduction is that this quotient topological space, the uh, inverse image of the point C modded out by the stabilizer subgroup, usually denoted like this, is a symplectic manifold under reasonableness conditions. Now, suppose that one wanted to, to generalize this setup. How might one do that? Well, one might say 
um, one might look at the, the notion uh, of a Hamiltonian action of a, a symplectic groupoid. After all, uh, a Hamiltonian G space is equivalent to a Hamiltonian space for the cotangent groupoid of that Lie group. And so Marsden-Weinstein reduction then can be thought of as uh, reduction for the symplectic groupoid being the cotangent groupoid. What about reduction with respect to a more arbitrary symplectic group? So that's the main impetus here. So a generalization will involve taking, say, an arbitrary symplectic groupoid um, and a, a Hamiltonian G space for that. Now, the base space of this symplectic groupoid is going to be uh, Poisson automatically. And now the moment map is going to take values in that, um, in that new Poisson manifold that we get. Now, on the, on the sort of Marsden and Weinstein side, um, I took a, a point in the dual of the Lie algebra. I might try to do something um, uh, sort of significant generalization of that. I might try to take an entire submanifold of the base space of my symplectic groupoid. And then the analog of this stabilizer subgroup for the point would be some subgroupoid of G that I would like to call and think of as a stabilizer subgroupoid, not being particularly precise at this point, but this is the rough idea. And now what we would want, perhaps, is that the inverse image of S under the moment map, modded out by this stabilizer subgroupoid, that's a, that's a topological space, we'd want that to be a symplectic manifold under reasonable hypotheses. Um, That's the, yes. So, so sorry, perhaps it's too early to ask that question. But so S is not say is not a symplectic leaf, not necessarily a symplectic leaf, or how? Well, what about that? So it will be it will become a, a pre-Poisson uh, submanifold. That's something that I that I will get to um, momentarily. But you're you're quite right. It will not be a completely arbitrary submanifold. This construction will have no chance of succeeding. And because already on the Marsden Weinstein side, you could have said not a point, but a quadrant orbit. Right? Indeed. Indeed. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, it is going to be, so the submanifold is going to be um, uh, from a large class of submanifolds called pre Poisson submanifolds that um, include all of the sort of familiar things um, as well as some others. So I'll, but I, you're quite right. I can't take a completely arbitrary submanifold. Okay, thank you. Sure. So one has this quotient topological space and one would hope for this to be a symplectic manifold under reasonable hypotheses. And of course, um, upon further refinement um, of some of the ingredients that, uh, that Anton just alluded to. And so let me next talk about, well, exactly how we might refine um, this, this sort of naive attempt at generalizing Marsden-Weinstein reduction. So let's take a, an arbitrary Poisson manifold, and I'll think of the bivector field as just a, a, a bundle morphism from the cotangent bundle to the tangent bundle. And let's say that I take a, a submanifold of my Poisson manifold. What can I do? Well, I can take the tangent bundle of this submanifold S, and I can take its preimage under this bivector field, and then I can intersect that with the annihilator in T star of X of the tangent bundle of S. So I'll denote the result of that um, by L sub S. And so far, all I've constructed is a collection of vector spaces sitting over S. There's no reason a priori for these vector spaces to have a uniform dimension. Um, but when that happens, the submanifold S is called pre Poisson. So, this is a, a definition due to uh, Catignon and, and Zambon, which is that this submanifold S is pre Poisson if this collection LS of vector spaces sitting over S has constant fiber dimension. And uh, this, this definition is, is actually um, quite a bit more encompassing than it might look uh, at first instance, in the sense that, um, and I can be more precise about this if a person wants, but, um, uh, but I won't be for the time being, 
um, there is a reasonable sense in which, in fact, generic submanifolds of X um, are pre-Poisson. So it, while it may seem like a, like a fairly restrictive condition, it's actually not one at all. So this is a very, very large class of submanifolds that we're going to be dealing with. Okay, but how does this apply to our situation? So let's suppose that my Poisson manifold X is the base space of a symplectic groupoid. And then let's suppose that inside that base space, I take something that is pre-Poisson. Well, then I can look at the Lie algebroid of my Lie groupoid. Um, and inside of that, LS is going to sit. And it turns out that this will actually sit as a, as a Lie subalgebroid of the Lie algebroid of my Lie groupoid. So this is a, a proposition also due to uh, Catignan and Zambon, which is that this LS will be a Lie subalgebroid of the, of the Lie algebroid of my groupoid, if S is pre-Poisson. Okay, so we can ask, well, um, is there something that integrates that? And this is the basic foundation of a stabilizer subgroupoid. So, the, the definition is that if I have a, an immersed, not necessarily injectively immersed Lie subgroupoid that is isotropic inside the symplectic groupoid G and integrates this Lie algebroid, then we call that a stabilizer subgroupoid for S. So oops, that's the definition. So an immersed Lie subgroupoid is a stabilizer subgroupoid if it's isotropic and integrates the Lie algebroid of this pre-Poisson submanifold S. Okay, and these, it turns out, are all the ingredients that one needs for the main construction, which I will now describe. This is the, this is the main construction, and it's, uh, as everything in this paper, it's joint with uh, Maxon's. So the setup is, as I've alluded to, I'm going to suppose that I have a symplectic groupoid G, acting in a, in a Hamiltonian fashion on a symplectic manifold. Um, I'm going to suppose first as well that I have a, a pre-Poisson submanifold S um, and that I have a stabilizer subgroupoid as well for that submanifold. And then I'm going to make the following two, shall we say, reasonableness assumptions. They are as follows. First, well, we want the inverse image of S to be a to be a submanifold. That is a sort of step zero for this construction to actually produce something reasonable in the end. But we also want to assume that its tangent spaces are given in the manner one would expect, namely the tangent space to a point in mu inverse of S is just going to be the inverse image of the tangent space of S under the differential of the, of the moment map. So we want this to be true as well. And another, sort of sanity condition, um, is that in fact, when we take the quotient of mu inverse of S by the stabilizer subgroupoid H, what we get is actually a manifold in a reasonable way. So we're going to be assuming that this quotient topological space has a manifold structure for which the usual quotient map is a submersion. Then in those cases, that manifold, that quotient manifold is going to be symplectic in the expected way. So then what one has is that this quotient has a unique symplectic form that when pulled back under the, under the quotient map agrees with the restriction of the symplectic form on M to that level set. That's the usual condition and that's exactly what one gets here. And so in that case, well, um, we'll just formalize this by defining everything in sight. Um, in that case, we adopt the notation that um, I'm taking the reduction of M by the symplectic groupoid G with respect to S and H like that. So that's our, that's our main construction. And we call that symplectic manifold, the reduction by, uh, of M by G along S with respect to H. Um, Peter? Yes. Uh, there is a question on the chart. Oh, is there? Okay. Let me see. By Myers. But mu is not transverse to S. Yes. Yes, I, th yes, I think so. And I think 
Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. And I will, um, I'll actually give you an example the talk. So I'm going to take something um, in X that is uh, not, a, not a transversal. I'm going to take something that is actually genuinely pre-Poisson um, in, in the required way. So I think that'll be the answer to the question. Uh, uh, that's not the question. The question is not whether the question is whether the moment map is transverse to the pre-Poisson manifold. So a genuinely clean value instead of a regular value. Yes. I, I think that's, I think the answer is yes. Uh, I have yes. another question. Yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, does one really need a symplectic groupoid to do this? Uh, doesn't, isn't it enough to have uh, these, these uh, moment map things, so the symplectic manifold with a Poisson map into X, and then these quotient but that you are taking by age, isn't it really the quotient of some uh, foliation that you have on the pre-image of S without any interability assumptions? Yes, but I, I guess how would one, how would one define a Hamiltonian space unless the groupoid was a symplectic groupoid in the beginning is, 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 my, kind of, is my kind of question. Mm -hmm. So I, I think- So at least in the case where new is a submersion, you could do that. If it was what's called sometimes a symplectic realization of the possible. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, that that yes, that sounds that sounds reasonable. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Sure. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Sure. Um, is there a direct structure interpretation of this construction? I mean, maybe you restrict um, to this S and you restricted Poisson structure is Dirac and then you do something like that. I haven't, I haven't thought about that, but that's, that's an interesting, that's a very interesting question. Ah, Maxence thinks that there is. <laughs> okay, there is. I, I believe he, I believe he's working on a, I believe he's working on a, a sort of Dirac version of this, uh, of this thing I'm talking about. So, okay, mm -hmm. excellent, excellent. Sorry, <laughs> can I ask? <laughs> Maybe you're asking too many questions, but it's good. Oh, no, by all means. Uh, so I think there is a theorem by uh, um, Catania and Zambon that says that a pre-Poisson submanifold is always a quasitropic submanifold inside the Poisson transversal. That is true, that is for sure. So if you restrict your symplectic group point to this Poisson transversal, you mm -hmm. get a symplectic groupoid. Sure. And then these coisotropic submanifolds is going to integrate to mm -hmm. some symplectic, symplectic, but also a symplectic groupoid inside that smaller symplectic groupoid. And then mm -hmm. this is kind of like ordinary reduction for that coisotropic submanifold. Or am I, I, suppose I, you, I suppose you can think of it that way. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, interesting point. Yeah, this is, this is all very true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Excellent. All right. So I shall I shall press on. So let me, ooh, let me see if I can still advance. Let me make a couple of uh, comments about this construction. So first is um, that so far I've been speaking only in the the C infinity, the smooth category. There are analogous versions of this result. Um, in the categories of complex manifolds and in the, the categories of complex algebraic varieties. So there is definitely some uh, flexibility of category. One has to be a little bit more careful in the algebraic category because the notion of quotient can be a lot more subtle. Um, uh, but if one, is, if one is more careful, then everything will continue to make sense. Um, and this construction recovers as special cases um, the following uh, versions or the following symplectic quotient constructions that have emerged in the literature over the years. And I'll, I'll mention some of these as examples, but for now, let me just list them. Special cases include Marston-Weinstein reduction and McCammy-Weinstein reduction for symplectic groupoid actions. Um, 
the very simple fact that when you take the pre-image of a Poisson transversal under a moment map, you get something symplectic that can be realized as a special case of a construction. A little bit more exotically, one can recover symplectic implosion as a case um, of, of reduction along a submanifold if one thinks about it the right way. Symplectic cutting as well. Um, and then the theme on which I'll, I'll conclude my talk is recent work by Ginsberg and Kajdan um, on what are called more Tachikawa varieties in TQFT. You can realize their construction as an instance of symplectic reduction along a submanifold. But before I do that, let me, let me just set a, set a convention. If I have a, a Hamiltonian G space for a group G, well, as I said before, I can think of that as a, a Hamiltonian space for the cotangent groupoid. And well, then I can think of myself as performing, if I want to, symplectic reduction along the submanifold with respect to the cotangent groupoid of my group G. So in other words, setting up everything the right way, I can in effect reduce by a group along a submanifold. So the way to say that is as follows. If I have a Lie group G, Hamiltonian G space M, and pre-Poisson submanifold of the dual of the Lie algebra, as well as a stabilizer subgroupoid for that, then I can define the reduction of M along S with respect to H and the group G as precisely this form of symplectic reduction along a submanifold. And that continues to make sense. So uh, even in the group case, one gets, a, one gets a fairly wide variety of things to construct. All right. And so without further ado, let me, let me move on to some examples of this construction. Um, and the first is, uh, well, more of a, frankly, sanity check than it is an example. Uh, so suppose that I have a, a symplectic groupoid G, okay? Um, and suppose inside of its base, I take a pre-Poisson submanifold. Well, if I'm to do any kind of symplectic reduction by this groupoid along the submanifold, I need to know that I have at least one stabilizer subgroupoid for this pre-Poisson submanifold. And the good news is, yes, in general, there will be several, several. But in particular, there's always going to be a unique one that is source connected and source simply connected. So at least on that level, this construction can proceed in a fairly high degree of generality. You don't have this existence of structure. Okay. But what about concrete examples? Well, first of all, how does one recover Marsden-Weinstein reduction as a case of this construction? Well, again, let's suppose I, I have a Lie group and I take a point in the dual of its Lie algebra. Well, then I can think of that point as a singleton submanifold. That turns out to be pre-Poisson. And what would be a stabilizer subgroupoid for that? Well, I can take the stabilizer of that point under the co-adjoint action, just sitting as a group over that one point. Um, and that will be a, a stabilizer subgroupoid for this point inside of the cotangent bundle. In, sorry, inside of the cotangent groupoid, where technically speaking, I'm using the left trivialization of the cotangent bundle to think of the centralizer over XC as sitting inside uh, of the cotangent bundle. But Hope you'll forgive me for that. Okay, so now I can take any Hamiltonian G space and I can reduce it along the submanifold XC with respect to this particular stabilizer subgroupoid. And it will come as no surprise that when I do that, I get exactly the Marsden Weinstein reduced space for M. Okay, now the second example is recovering symplectic implosion. I Yes. Sorry, there is a question on the chart. Okay. How do we know that this that this is simply connected? Um, it's a it's a theorem due to um, uh, Catignon um, and and Zambon that you can always find a unique one of these that is source connected and source simply connected. So it's not nothing nothing is automatic here, but it's a this is a theorem that they prove. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Peter? Uh, yes. 
do do you allow uh, when you say an immersed leave subgroupoid? Do you allow? Are you requiring your immersion to be injective or not? No, no. So it could be something like a covering map. It could indeed. It could indeed. So it can be a non-injective immersion. Absolutely. All right. So now, uh, now for symplectic implosion. So I'm going, to, I'm going to assume, let me just see, I'm going to assume that my group is compact and connected. Um, and then inside of the dual of its Lie algebra, I'm going to fix a closed fundamental vial chamber. Now, this is not a, this is not a submanifold at all, um, but it is stratified into submanifolds. In fact, it's actually stratified into pre Poisson submanifolds. So um, everything will work in the expected way in terms of the stratification. So I'm going to say that this closed fundamental vial chamber is a stratified pre Poisson submanifold, if you like. And what would be a stabilizer subgroupoid for that? Well, it's a, it's a group scheme sitting over the closed fundamental vial chamber. And the fiber of that group scheme over a point is just going to be exactly the derived centralizer of that point under the co-adjoint action. And this will be a stabilizer subgroupoid for, um, for this closed fundamental vial chamber inside the cotangent groupoid, where again, I'm thinking of this, sub, this as a subgroupoid uh, by left trivializing the cotangent bubble. Okay. So now if I have any Hamiltonian G space, well, I can try to reduce it along this closed fundamental vial chamber with respect to that stabilizer subgroupoid. Um, and if I do that, uh, what I recover is, is this space, M I M P L, uh, which is the imploded cross section uh, of M as, as defined by Gilliman, Jeffrey, and, and Schumacher. So symplectic implosion is a special case, if one is careful to take into account stratifications, of reduction along a submap. Okay, how about the pre-images of Poisson transversals under moment maps? How do we realize that as a special case? Well, let's just take any symplectic groupoid at all. And let's suppose that inside of its base, I take an actual Poisson transversal. Well, that Poisson transversal is going to be an example of a pre-Poisson submanifold, and its stabilizer subgroupoid will just be the trivial groupoid over that submanifold S. And so what can I do? Well, I can take any Hamiltonian space for this symplectic groupoid, and I can reduce it along S with respect to that trivial groupoid. And what do I get? Well, I get the symplectic manifold that is just the inverse image of S under the moment map. That's it. Okay. And there's a, a somewhat more um, esoteric example uh, that I would like to go over. Um, and um, that, is, that is heavily Lee theoretic, and, but, I, but I think sort of illustrates the, um, the flexibility of the construction. So it proceeds as follows. It's, it's going to be reduction along what I'm gonna call the subregular semi-simple locus. What do I mean by this? Well, I'm going to suppose that my group is connected and com uh, complex and semi-simple. And then what do I have in that case? Well, I have a non-degenerate killing form by means of which I can identify the Lie algebra and its dual equivariantly. Now, if I take a point in the dual, what does it mean for that point to be, say, semi-simple? Well, it means that it corresponds, the point it corresponds to in the Lie algebra under the killing form is semi-simple, meaning add of it is a diagonalizable endomorphism. So more precisely, I'm saying that an element of G dual is semi-simple if it satisfies exactly this condition. Okay, but I need to introduce one more definition here. Um, I also want to say what it means for X to be um, subregular. Now, for generic points in the dual of the Lie algebra, their Lie algebra centralizers are going to have dimension equal to the rank of the Lie algebra. 
Um, but I wanna look at those with centralizer dimension equal to the rank plus two. Those are called subregular elements. So X is called subregular if the dimension of its centralizer is the rank of my Lie algebra plus two. Okay, and then now let me take a look at the locus of points or the, the locus of points that are both subregular and semi simple. I'm going to denote it like this, and it will turn out to be a smooth, locally closed subvariety of the dual of the Lie algebra. Okay, well, this also turns out to be pre Poisson. And what's its stabilizer subgroupoid? Well, again, it's, it's going to be a group scheme over the subregular semi simple locus. And the group sitting over a point is again going to be the derived centralizer of that point. Okay. Now, let me take a specific Hamiltonian G space, namely the cotangent bundle equipped with the right translation action of the group. Peter? Yes. Uh, may I ask you this? Um, uh, can you take a subgroup GX, GX? Is it always isomorphic to SO2 or? Yes. Okay, thank you. It, well, it's, it's Lie algebra is always uh, isomorphic to. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, of course the group, who knows? Okay. Um, but, but yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure. So uh, let's take the cotangent bundle of the group G and let's, um, let's let the group act on it by right translation, consider that Hamiltonian action. Let me reduce that by the subregular semi simple locus with respect to this specific stabilizer subgroup point. And what are we going to get in that case? Well, we're going to get a variety that sits over the subregular semi simple locus. And the fiber over a point in that subregular semi simple locus, say the point is X, is going to be the group modulo the derived centralizer of X under the, under the co adjoint action. Uh, so yes, this, this has a perfectly reasonable uh, symplectic structure that uh, Max Hans and I uh, describe in, in some detail in the paper. It's not the kind of uh, space that as far as we know uh, is, um, is, is, has been realized as symplectic, but it appears to be. Um, and just as a kind of cute sanity check that one can do, um, one can compute at least the complex dimension of this and, and notice that it's even. And if one does that, one gets that this, uh, this variety has dimension two dim G minus six. So a good, a good sanity check there. Okay, so this example is illustrative of something, uh, of something important. If I have any Lie group, uh, well, I can always just take its cotangent bundle and equip that with the right translation action. And then I can just try to take that and reduce along any pre Poisson submanifold of the dual of its Lie algebra, and out should come a symplectic manifold in the end. So, this process of taking a, a Lie group and a pre Poisson submanifold of the dual of its Lie algebra and producing from this a, um, a, a symplectic reduced space gives rise to a family of what are called, or what I'm going to call momentarily, universal reduced spaces. Let me be a little bit more precise about that. So I'm gonna take again, just a, a Lie group with um, Lie algebra G. And what I'm gonna do is inside of its dual, take a pre Poisson submanifold. I'm going to take as well a stabilizer subgroupoid for that submanifold in the dual of Lie algebra. And as I said, I'm gonna take the cotangent bundle and equip it with the right translation Hamiltonian action. Well, then what do I get when I reduce this cotangent bundle by the group along the submanifold S with respect to H? Well, I, if all of the hypotheses of that construction are satisfied, these non-degeneracy conditions, if you like, um, then the space I get is actually going to be a symplectic manifold, but it's gonna be a little bit more than that because the cotangent bundle comes equipped, of course, with the left translation action of the group. And so that's going to induce a Hamiltonian action um, on the reduced space that I will have just constructed. 
So saying all that in a nutshell, is that if this triple satisfies a non-degeneracy condition, namely is such that we can apply that theorem uh, of Maxence and myself to it, um, then the corresponding reduced space is going to be a nice Hamiltonian G space. And definition then, um, I'm going to give it special notation. I'm going to think of, I'm going to write it like this. And we call it the universal reduced space associated to that triple. G, S, and H. Now, what will end up making it universal is the fact that you can, in a sense, obtain any reduction by the group G along S with respect to H um, through this space right here. A little bit more precisely, what one has is the following. If I have any Hamiltonian G space M like this, well, I can reduce it along S with respect to H by the group. On the other hand, what I could do is I could take the product of M with this other Hamiltonian G space and for technical reasons negate the symplectic form there. And then I could take the Marsden Weinstein reduction of this space at level zero by the group. And these two spaces turn out to be the same. In other words, for any Hamiltonian G space M, I can view symplectic reduction of it by, along the submanifold with respect to the subgroupoid and the group as a kind of Marsden-Weinstein reduction that is twisted by this universal space. That's why it's called a that's why it's called a universal space. And then this universal space construction gives a connection to uh, some recent work of Ginsburg and Kajdan on more Tachikawa varieties in TQFT which is what I'd like to talk about next. Okay, I'm just continuing on. All right, so the setup is going to go from, or the, the sort of framework is going to go from the smooth category um, to, the, to the algebra geometric category um, right now. And so my group from now on is going to be a, a connected complex semi-simple Lie group like this. And then now I can take the dual of the Lie algebra of that group, and um, I can take a look at the map from that dual to the quotient of the dual by the group G. That's called the adjoint quotient. That has a, that has a family of distinguished sections called Costin sections. Costin constructed them using SL2 triple theory. And so what I would like to do is inside of the dual of this Lie algebra, I'd like to fix a constant slice. Okay. And then out of this slice, I'm going to build two further varieties. The first is something that I'm going to call T. And it's just a very, very simple affine variety. It's just, the, uh, it's just my group um, product with the, with the constant slice S. Okay. Now, if I left trivialize the cotangent bundle of my group G, then I can think of this product G times S as sitting inside of the cotangent bundle of the group. And it turns out that when I do this, this product G times S will sit inside as a symplectic subvariety. Literally, when you take the symplectic form on the cotangent bundle and you, you pull it back to this subvariety, you get something that's non-degenerate. Okay, so this T is a first variety that you can construct out of S. What's another one? Well, um, instead of just looking at all of G times S, I can look at all points where the element of the group stabilizes the element of the slice under the coadjoint action. And I'm going to call that result J, like that. This space is sometimes called the universal centralizer. So this is, a, this is a scheme that sits over the cost and slice S. Each fiber is, is a group, so it's actually a, a group scheme. And moreover, um, it's an abelian group scheme, it turns out. It turns out that all of these centralizers will actually be abelian groups. So this J is an abelian group scheme. Um, and well, at least the group part of this can act on the group part of T by right translation. And so that's an action that I want to, that I want to consider here. 
Okay. Now, an extra thing that I'm going to fix is just a, just a positive integer n. And then what I'd like to do is say, well, this t sits as a scheme over s, and I'm going to denote by t sub n the n-fold fibered product of t over s, just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for the universal centralizer J. I'm going to take its n-fold Cartesian product as a, as a scheme over S. Um, but then I have a, a fiber-wise multiplication map from this space to the universal centralizer. And I'd like to take the kernel of that. And I'm going to call that result J sub n. And then, well, the fact that J is an abelian group scheme that's acting on, uh, on T is going to manifest as this JN being an abelian group scheme acting on this uh, T sub N like that. Okay, so what's happening here from a geometric standpoint? Well, um, I can take the non-fiber product of T N times, namely I can take its N-fold Cartesian product. And because T is symplectic, that product will be symplectic as well. And in fact, this T sub little n will sit inside of the T sub upper n as a, as a closed subvariety. It turns out that it will in fact sit inside of T sub upper n as a coisotropic subvariety. And then, well, what's the null foliation on that coming from the pullback of the symplectic form to T sub n? Well, it's actu it actually coincides with the Jn orbits on T sub n. Okay, so what we should think then is that if we mod out by the Jn action, we should get something symplectic. But because we're in the algebraic setting, we have to be a little bit more careful with what we mean by modding out. In other words, well, we need to ask, do we have a reasonable quotient of T sub n by J sub n? And the answer is, as it turns out, that we do. So there is a smooth uh, geometric quotient variety of T sub n by J sub n. And then now by the previous bullet point, this is going to be a symplectic variety that I'm going to denote by Zn uh, with a circ to indicate that it's not quite complete yet, not quite the final thing that I actually want. But this is definitely um, a symplectic variety. Now, what Ginsburg and Kajdan do with this symplectic variety is they take its affinization and they call that Z sub n. So what do I do? I, I take the coordinate ring of this affine variety. I look at invariance with respect to this abelian group scheme J sub n, and I take the spectrum of that. Now, of course, uh, this algebra could fail to be finitely generated. In principle, I, I believe it's still open as to whether this is finitely generated or not. But we don't know that it's finitely generated. So at the moment, this Z sub n is just, a, just an affine scheme so far. And what Ginsburg and Kajdan prove um, in, in a, a paper that's been uh, circulating around for a number of years, but I think it's, I think it's going over um, a number of updates, um, is that this Z sub N um, is the nth more Tachikawa scheme in the sense that the family of varieties Z sub N, um, uh, well, the family of schemes, I should say, satisfy um, the hypotheses of a certain more Tachikawa uh, TQFT that was conjectured uh, about 10 years ago. Okay, now this, this ginsburg kajdan construction of, of more Tachikawa schemes um, actually turns out to have a bit of an explanation in terms of symplectic reduction along a submanifold. And now to get that explanation, what I'd like to do is again, take my fixed positive integer n, and I would like to consider this object. I would like to consider the diagonally embedded copy of my constant slice s, in the um, n-fold Cartesian product of the dual of the Lie algebra like that. Now, what is that geometrically? Well, uh, this is something Max Hans and I proved. 
that space um, is actually um, a genuine pre-Poisson subvariety of G star to the N. It's not a Poisson transversal, it's not a Poisson submanifold, but it is actually a pre-Poisson, a genuine pre-Poisson subvariety. Okay, and so you can ask, well, um, what is its stabilizer subgroupoid going to be? It will be, since we're taking n-fold products, it will be a Lie subgroupoid of uh, the cotangent bundle of the group to the nth power. Okay, what will that be? Well, if you remember from the previous slide over S, I had this, this abelian group scheme J sub N. And if I identify S with this diagonally embedded copy, I can think of J sub N as, a, as a, an abelian group scheme over this delta N S. And then that group scheme turns out to be a stabilizer subgroupoid for, uh, for this pre-Poisson subvariety like that. So this, is a stabilizer subgroupoid for that inside the cotangent bundle of G to the N. Okay, so now what I can do is I can take, I can look at the universal reduced space for this pre Poisson subvariety and for this stabilizer subgroupoid and, and, uh, and, and for the group G to the power of N and see what kind of space I get. And it turns out that what I actually get is this nth more Tachikawa scheme explicitly constructed by Ginsburg and Kajdan. What I'm saying, what I'm writing here is not literally true as I've, as I've stated it. Um, I defined universal spaces in the smooth category for which one only needs three pieces of data. In the algebraic category, one technically also needs um, a fourth piece of data which is a quotient morphism from um, the inverse image of the pre-Poisson submanifold to whatever the quotient is supposed to be. So if you include that in as part of the data of universal reduced spaces in the algebraic case and are careful enough about this specific universal reduced space, then there's a precise sense in which what you get is the nth more Tachikawa scheme constructed by Ginsburg and Kajdan. Okay. Well, um, that's what I had prepared. I suppose I finished a little bit early, but, um, but thank you very much for having me and uh, uh, I'd be happy to take questions. Thanks a lot. Yeah, please, questions or comments, you can either unmute yourself or raise your hand or put your question in the chat, whatever way you prefer. I have a question. Peter. Sure. No, you, you go ahead. Rare go ahead, Alan. <laughs> Sorry, oh. Alan, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, you're next. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I'm wondering, in the cases where some of these um, regularity hypotheses don't hold, where something doesn't have constant dimension or the action doesn't have a good quotient. There are things like uh, so-called DRST theory and BV theory, um, which can be used instead of the actual reduction. So for example, if you have a Lie algebra acting, then um, <clears throat> the quotient, the functions on the quotient, um, if it's nice, will be the, um, the zeroth cohomology of the Lie algebra action with the Lie algebra action with respect to this representation on the functions on the manifold. Um, and um, so, in the general case, you can look at the full cohomology. Excuse me. Excuse me. Anyway, is there a version of all this for your setting, which you looked into? I haven't haven't looked into that, but I mean that's that's a very uh, that would be a very natural direction in which to 
try to try to generalize this. No, it's 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 not something we uh, it's not something we considered at all. But it it, it sounds it sounds very very natural. Mm -hmm. I see Max Sans wrote that there's a stacky version. That is true. There is a stacky version. We didn't connect to uh, to BRST uh, theory, but yeah, we did. We did put us. We did include a couple of pages on a stacky version of this. Mm -hmm. um, Rayer, you promised us an example uh, of a reduction along a pre poisson manifold where the moment that was not transverse but only intersects cleanly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that this uh, delta n s is an example. I see. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it would be uh, with respect to the moment map on the cotangent bundle of G to the n. I see. These more Tachikawa schemes, uh, even if the, the z n circle you started out with was smooth, when you affinize, you may pick up singularities. But yes. how about this more Tachikawa scheme? Is that smooth or singular? So in the um, limited number of examples that, uh, uh, that one can sort of compute, um, I think they, they turn out to be smooth, but in principle, they don't, there's no requirement in uh, the theory that they be smooth. And, um, and I think probably if one, if one tries hard enough, one can actually, like if one takes N sufficiently large, I think there's no reason, there's no reason for those to be smooth. I think probably there are, I'm pretty sure that there are, that there are examples where that is the case. I'm pretty sure. I mean, for N equals one, two, and three, I think they're, I think they're all smooth, but I think, once you take higher n, that can happen. Um, and there and and this was allowed for uh, in the more Tachikawa paper. So they they spoke of you know they wanted these things to be um, affine symplectic varieties, but for them meaning only sort of smooth and and symplectic generically. Thank you. Sure. Okay, more, more questions or comments? Um, I, I have a small question about this uh, sub-regular. Sure, uh, I can take us back there if that would. Yeah, so, so, so um, I'm, I think like a more naive approach to stabilizers is to fix a conjugacy class of the stabilizer. Yes. And then to consider the points which have uh, stabilizers belonging to that conjugacy class. Mm -hmm. uh, so one question would be, uh, would it also work? And the other question is, you, you're saying rank plus two, why not rank pl plus some other positive integers? Um, okay, so I th this is actually a great question. So, um, uh, first of all, I think if you, I, I think, um, yeah, I mean, um, any uh, G invariant uh, submanifold uh, or sub variety, say in this case of the dual of the Lie algebra, is going to end up being pre plus on. So if you take a stratum or, say, a fixed, um, conjugacy class of stabilizers that will be that will be invariant under the group and so so pre poisson and yeah so that could be done here absolutely um, I, I haven't worked it out but definitely one could apply the theory here um, why yeah I mean why why did I why did I focus on the on the sub regular case well um, Just because I, I guess it's, it's somewhere between, you know, really, really concrete and expected, but, but slightly, um, slightly exotic um, in, terms of a, in terms of a Lee theoretic example. You could definitely fix um, uh, a certain uh, centralizer 
uh, a preferred centralizer dimension like rank G plus two times whatever, such that that centralizer dimension is achieved. And that'll again be uh, G invariant. Um, so pre Poisson automatically. Um, and you could apply the theory to this if, if it's smooth, um, and which in the subregular case, um, it would be guaranteed to be smooth, probably, probably in the desired generality too. Okay, thank you. Um, more questions or comments? Uh, yeah, could I ask a question? Sure. Um, actually, I think you just mentioned what I wanted to ask, which was, uh, these semi, uh, sorry, these uh, these subregular points. You said the locus is a smooth, like it's a smooth manifold. The subregular locus itself doesn't have to be smooth, doesn't but the subregular semi-simple locus does. The subregular semi-simple locus. That's right. Okay. Okay. okay thanks. Sure. All right. Uh more questions? Uh, well, if not, Peter, thanks again. Sure. sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. I, uh, I appreciate that. I, um, this is a nice, a nice seminar to be part of. Yeah, so uh, thank you everybody for participation and uh, uh, see you next week on Global Poisson. This will be talked by Francis Curran. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye and thank you, Peter, again. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.